In order to find our topic for this video, we had to go through an intense brainstorming process. First, we thought about skiing. But then we realized there's no snow in San Diego. Then, we thought about shopping. But there's not too many physics concepts supporting that. Lastly, we considered ice skating. But we can't skate. After repeating these steps over and over, we stumbled upon a topic with an abundance of concepts supporting it. Travel and transportation. Travel and transportation can be understood by investigating friction, Newton's first law, and aerodynamics. Wait, wait, wait. Transportation is just transportation. It's not affected by physics. Friction is a force that opposes the motion of objects. Friction plays a major role in transportation and affects how trains and cars stop. When a train halts, friction is created between the tracks and the train. Although the steel wheels and tracks appear to be smooth, they both have rough surfaces that rub against one another and cause the train to slow down and eventually stop when the brakes are applied. Brake pads, which are made out of rubber and other materials that have the ability to grip onto surfaces, are pushed onto the wheel to stop the train. Car wheels are made of similar materials and have treads that allow the car to be easily maneuvered. When a brake pad is applied to the inside of a car's wheel, it creates a large amount of friction, letting the car's speed rapidly decrease. The car's tires also allow for maximum friction between the car and the road. If it weren't for friction, it would be impossible to control your vehicle. Nobody needs friction. Friction is a little bit important, but like, Newton's first law? What is that anyways? Newton's first law states that objects will remain at rest or in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. That is so dumb. See, I can pick this up, I can throw it, you can catch it, it's smooth moving, it is stuck, it is false, this is dumb. You and I are both outside forces. This law, also known as the law of inertia, is responsible for the way your body moves when it is inside an airplane or a car. Your body moves at the same velocity as a car when it is inside of it. Your body wants to continue moving at the same speed and direction. When a car turns, your body continues going straight, which is why you lean when the direction of a vehicle changes. If the car stops, you continue moving forward until acted upon by an outside force. This outside force can be many things, including your seatbelt, click it or ticket, airbag, and windshield. This law also provides a reason to why you are pressed back into your seat when an airplane takes off. The aircraft is moving upwards at a diagonal slant. This allows gravity, an outside force, to push you against your seat. The plane is also traveling much faster than your body, and your body is pushed back as the airplane pulls you with it as you continue forward. Well, I mean, I guess the nurse is important, but that other thing you said, a Rio dynamite, is probably just something stupid. Do you mean aerodynamics? Whatever. Well, aerodynamics is extremely important to traveling and affects how transportation devices look and work. Aerodynamics is the study of how solid bodies move through air. By creating vehicles with aerodynamic designs, transportation has gotten faster over history. So pretty much everything about an airplane relies on aerodynamics and the science of it for flight. The wing is shaped a certain way so that when you go through the air, it creates lift by accelerating the air particles and changing their pressure. When you take off and when you land, you notice we put out things called flex. The lever is right here. So we have things that go out back of the wing and things that come out the front of the wing and that actually changes the shape of the wing, what we call the camber, which changes the aerodynamics, which helps you to, when you're landing, to decrease your airspeed. You have to slow down to be able to come down to the ground, right? Putting the gear down is going to change your aerodynamics, using the flaps is going to change your aerodynamics, all those different things. So those all affect um, airplanes and how they fly all the time. Fine. Yes, physics does have an effect on travel and transportation. I'll think about that the next time I go on a car ride to Montana or binge watch Friends at my friend's house. I hate to say it, but I guess 
Suppose you were right. By examining friction, the inverse law in aerodynamics, we can develop an understanding of travel and transportation.